as, as a kid who grew up without English ability, I had to be able to become an expert at nonverbal communication. Now what? We go to the source. Find out what it takes to build your dream squad. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. I'm here at the West Richmond Community Center in Richmond with Gabe Lee, who's someone who I've admired for a long time. Anyone who plays basketball in Richmond knows Gabe because he is the Summer Slam guy. He's mentored and coached tons of kids. And the reason I wanted to meet Gabe today is because I've really admired him ever since the first day I met him. He's a fantastic communicator. So my daughter had started playing basketball with his league and he had met me maybe once or twice. Never forgot my name. Out of all of the parents that he came into contact with, never forgot a name, didn't forget the kid's name, always uh, greeted everyone with so much enthusiasm and made the kids feel so great about themselves and kept them coming back every week. And this is not an elite level basketball league. This is a community rec league that's just been a real pillar of the Richmond community for many years. So without further ado, here is Gabe. Hey everyone, thank you for that uh, glorious introduction. I'm extremely humbled to be here today. So Gabe, can you tell us a little bit about your background um, in terms of basketball in Richmond and working within the SummerSlam League? For sure. Um, so I moved to Canada from Cory Bay, Hong Kong when I was seven years old. And at that point in my life, I didn't speak a lick of English. Therefore, in order to really validate myself, I devoted my life towards the sport of basketball. Because while I didn't understand symbolism in novels or what, like cake, what, what rhymed cake with bake. When we came to basketball, I could always feel like the immediate feedback from it. Like if I made a shot in a defender's face, I could see their eyes wilt. If I took the ball from them at half court, went to the other way, finished the layup. Like those things didn't need to be expressed. I just did them and then I felt validated through the sport. And all throughout my life, like because of how much the sport meant to me through the, throughout those four years, I wanted to give back to the sport through my first love of developing and fostering uh, Richmond Youth Basketball League and SummerSlam Basketball League in the best possible way I could for the past uh, 14, 15 years of my life. That's so great. And one of the things, because I'm a Raptors fan, and I hope you are too if you're watching this, um, one of the things that I love, that I love is the logo of the SummerSlam League. You wanna show it, Gabe? Sure. We, it's We the West. This one right here. Did you design that? Yeah, in collaboration with, um, with a graphic designer, I just kind of expressed um, what the vision was. And I feel like, I feel like all throughout, it's all about, in, the, in, my, in this life, I feel like it's all about improving the past, past experiences. If I didn't play in the league all throughout my, from like seven to 17, I wouldn't have seen all the things I wanted to improve upon during my, the opportunity I had to run the league and like, Making, making the apparel like as cool as like NBA gear was definitely like on top of my, my list when I was like 12 years old and, and wearing this t-shirt that, you know, I felt like it could have been cooler and I manifested that X amount of years later. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> and I know it's been meaningful for the kids because the league's just grown every single year and it's, it's incredibly popular now. So what I was especially curious about today is hearing Gabe's stories. Gabe, can you tell me how you became such a good communicator? Uh, <laughs> First and foremost, I think I'm humbled by that, but I think like there's, there's still a lot of steps for me to become a great communicator. I think like I'm an above average communicator, but there's still lots of work to be done for me to become a great one, but thank you. Um, I think I wanna go back to my first answer for that. Um, as, as a kid who grew up without English ability, I had to be able to become an expert at nonverbal communication, like to sense the energy in a room. While everyone else was communicating based on reactivity, when I couldn't say anything, literally, when I was seven to probably 10, all I could do was sit, observe, and then see how I would do it better. And then see how the other person felt because I could feel all this energy, but I could not engage in it. So I promised myself, like, when I was able to articulate 
myself in the way that I wanted to and become obsessive over English as a way I, in the same way I was obsessive over basketball that in, when I had that ability I would use that for good and to try to lighten up as many days as possible because I know when I saw um, just the, the adverse effects that language has as someone who had to observe it from a nonverbal perspective. What I'm wondering about is how have you used those experiences that you had as a child learning to master nonverbal communication to help kids that you work with when you're coaching? Hmm. Um, I think that's a great question. For me, it's always about um, one of the things that uh, my mom always said to me was like, seek first to understand before, before trying to be understood. So in my work with Richmond Youth Basketball League and with SummerSlam, I understood that each participant in the league was playing basketball for a different reason. Like for me, it was about finding meaning and validating myself through the sport because I didn't have, otherwise I wouldn't have friends. For some, joining basketball may just be a vehicle to have friends, but, it's, but it also doesn't have to be on, the, on that end of the spectrum where it means everything. And to others, like your daughter, it could be like the opportunity to further explore herself and then to, to play at a higher level of basketball. So to first, to apply what my mom taught me to first understand before, before it would be understood, I had to understand, I had to teach my, the people who worked with me that how you communicate to each player and each coach and each, and each parent, frankly, is based on of what they would like from the experience. If we're not satisfying what their needs first, then they'll never like fully listen to what, what's being said. But once you earn their trust and they feel like they're being understood, I feel like the, the doors just open up. I love that. I love it especially that if there's an acknowledgement that everybody's here for a different reason and really just looking at the individual and, and help supporting them to get what they need out of it. Mm -hmm. And there's also that piece of some people, some of the boys and girls there were just there because like mom or dad or their guardian just signed them up. And in that case, we have to incentivize them to like create an experience that's enjoyable for them. And that was always the biggest challenge for me because basketball was everything. And to make it mean something to someone was always the biggest reward. How did you do that? How did you incentivize them? Um, to have conversations. Have conversations with them and, so if, and see, what, see what they wanted from the experience and then design it from there. Like if they're, if, if they're just there because the mom or dad signed them up, then like those are the kids and what, like during team forming nights, first night, of, first night of the league, those are the kids that I'm like, all right, we have to put this player on a, on a team with friends, that, with friends they know from school or else from, this, from the offset, their experience is gonna be like here. But if they have friends on the team from previous experiences, from like math class, from, from swimming or something like that, then basketball becomes this, uh, this common mutual interest that they, that they can now develop a love off of as opposed to having to start from here, they start here. So Gabe, what's next for you? Now that I've put, now that, now that I've put the basketball down, I wanna leverage those experiences in communication and in empathy and compassion and leadership into developing my own company uh, titled Gabe Inc. And the mission is to become the Tony Robbins for high school age kids and to help them to be, to refine their purpose, refine their mission in a life and design a life that they can be absolutely obsessed with. So by the time that they graduate university, they're not just living for Friday night, they're not living for the weekend. Just like Kobe Bryant and I, they were living for Monday through Sunday and every single day we're so excited about living our best possible life and becoming the best possible version of ourselves. And I want to do that through eventually through in the next, in the next five years doing a 20 stadium tour across stadiums in North America, culminating at the Staples Center with Kobe Bryant introducing me to the stadium that he popularized. That is unbelievable. And what are your steps going to be to get there? Like, what's your, what's your week looking like this week? Um, to, my week-to-week -week meetings is to, uh, to meet as many entrepreneurs as possible to get into that entrepreneurial mindset where we're working 24-7 as opposed to 9-5. to Because I feel like one of the things I have to teach kids is that if we, in a way, school trains us to be average. If, we, if teachers tell us, if, if our teacher tells us we have to reach two chapters of the hatchet, come back tomorrow, and 
that's what everyone else is doing. In order to be fully great and to be excellent at what your craft is or to be obsessive over it, it's, all, it's really about doing more than everyone else, doing something different than any, everyone else. So if I'm, working, if I'm working 35 hours right now, I'm putting 35 hours a week into Gaber Inc. as well. And, and the micro steps would be to connect with as many people as possible and, and to also leverage how a lot of high school, high school uh, students at the moment are, um, are very into and absorbed into social media as the, as the, new, as the new TV. So how I'm able to be the most positive role model possible on social media to break up some of the, uh, that, um, that echo chamber, chamber of negativity and to be a, a source of inspiration for just like Kobe Bryant was for me. I love that echo chamber of negativity. That's such a, I'm going to take that away today. I mean, <laughs> and it really is. It's a, it's a rabbit hole, right? And it's yeah. just like, shh. Never so. stops. There's no, there's no stop cue. Like when we were, when we were younger, like when we, when we read, read newspapers or read mute magazines or read books, or even like when we watch TV, like there was like a stop cue, like commercial break. Yeah. But on Snapchat, on Instagram, you can scroll forever if you want. You can watch as many stories as possible. And, and for them to like just see something meaningful that I can put out or like my team puts out, they're like, oh, well, hold, this, hold on a second. This isn't like Logan Paul or something. Like this, this can impact my life. And I think that's ultimately what I want to create. Thanks, Gabe. Mm -hmm. And I would recommend, Gabe has an amazing Instagram. Um, so I'd recommend everyone going and checking it out. I'll have everything in the show notes at the bottom of the YouTube video. Um, there's so many inspirational quotes and so many things that he puts out there that just make you stop and think and really add to your day. So they really break up that echo chamber of negativity. <laughs> okay, Gabe, it's time for the what's your favorite round. Woohoo! What is your favorite YouTube channel? Um, outside of this one, my favorite YouTube channel is uh, Lewis House's uh, School of Greatness. A lot of great content on there to inspire me every day. Take note, everyone. He said outside of this <laughs> channel. So here's my plug. Be sure to subscribe below. Who is your favorite athlete? Uh, in the past, it was definitely uh, Kobe Bryant. But now that he's no longer a basketball player, it's uh, Steph Curry and Lonzo Ball. As they, uh, I really appreciate how they move the culture of uh, basketball being a fun sport as well as uh, basketball being uh, involving everyone as, um, as a big piece. Great. What's your favorite food? This is a tough one, but if, uh, if it didn't have the, the negative effects that it did, I would eat chicken strips and fries every single day, three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. And finally, what's your favorite communication hack? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I would probably advise for those watching to listen more than you speak. Because when you're speaking, oftentimes you're already going from, you're, down, you're processing information that's already downloaded in your, in your uh, the computer of your body and your mind. But if you were to listen more, especially around people that, that inspire you, or especially in like important conversations, you are downloading fresh content in which you can use to speak later. In a, in, a, in a way that's more refined and more intellectual and more in depth. I love that. I actually have a free PDF that you will see in a link below that talks about communication hacks and five common mistakes people make when they're using email and texting. Um, so just a plug there, check that out. I really appreciate Gabe's advice about listening and really taking in that fresh data and then being able to use it in the future. So thank you, Gabe. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. And Gabe, many, many thanks for participating today. We are going to do a part two of this interview that will come out in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you next time. Yeah. like this video, please let me know by liking it below. Subscribe and share it with your squad. Don't forget to comment below with interview requests and topic suggestions.